today we were going to go on a motorbike ride to one of many of the Blue Lagoons, but unfortunately, Molly's lost the motorbike key. I don't know why I'm so confident. Because you were the last, I gave the motorbike key to you. <laughs> the last driver was done. Yeah, but he says he gave the key back to you. So now it's a mission to try and find the motorbike key. We've searched all of the bags, can't find anything. I've looked all around the hostel, asked the staff. No, one, no one's seen it, I can't find it. So it looks like we might either have to hot wire it or try and find a, a key. Because this is a, it's a fake Honda win. It's a bike made in Vietnam and apparently all of the, all of the keys fit this DTEC, this model. So if I can just find someone that has a spare one, maybe that might work. If that doesn't work, or if I can't do that, then I might just have to pay for to get the the whole, I don't know what it's called, like the key chamber taken out, put a new one in, get some new keys fitted. We were planning on leaving Vang Vien pretty soon, but now I don't think that's gonna happen because I don't think the local mechanics are gonna have the part. So it looks like we're gonna have to order it from Thailand. That sounds long though, so maybe we'll just hot wire it. <laughs> Southeast Asia style. Yeah, Southeast Asia style. The only place I can think of that I haven't looked is underneath this decking. We came here and sat down almost immediately, so maybe it was in someone's pocket and it fell through the cracks, I don't know. Let's have a look. I hope there's no snakes under it. Oh, I can't see it. Oh, no key. Damn it. I really thought I might find it then. I'm really starting to think I'm going to have to hotwire my own bike. The dude that I bought this motorbike off of, he actually lost his key. He was driving really fast down a really bumpy road and his key came out of the bike. He actually had to get a new key, but he bought the bike in Cambodia, so I don't know if he did that in Cambodia, it's a lot easier. There's a lot more mechanics, they speak better English. I'm trying to contact him, I thought I had him on Facebook to ask him where he got the new key from, but he's not on my Facebook, so now it's a manhunt to try and find this dude. It's a social media manhunt. I think I have his girlfriend on Instagram, so we might might be able to do it. Yeah. We're stuck here, so it's not so bad, really, is it? No. Okay, done. What have you just found? The motorbike key. And where was it? <laughs> <laughs> so we've been blaming Molly. We've been blaming you all along. <laughs> Bob and Yang. Oh, that saves so much stress. Yes. <laughs> okay, now we've got the motorbike key. Do you want to go to the Blue Lagoon? Let's go. <laughs> huh? No helmet for Dan. Yeah, but I don't think there's any police checkpoints. Yeah, but just, you know, safety. <laughs> These are these cost fifteen dollars. They're not gonna do anything. They call them brain buckets in Southeast Asia. That these we wear these purely to stop the police uh, pulling us over. Both of us have got an international driver's permit, which is like a, an extension onto our UK driver's license. So it means that we can legally drive in a lot of countries in Southeast Asia. But because of coronavirus, we've been stuck here for nine months and we were traveling for around six months before that so our our permits that last the 12 months are out of date so technically uh we aren't we aren't driving legally so the police can pull us over if they see a phalang quite often they'll try and pull us over now the best thing to do if you see a police checkpoint you just keep driving and you just look forward you just pretend you haven't seen them and you just don't drive any faster, you just keep driving. If you can do, hide behind a vehicle, like a big truck or something, that's perfect, or a car or even another motorbike. If they do whistle you or something, or shout at you, don't stop, you just keep going because you have to keep looking forward and then it looks like you're just being a safe driver. 
Um, but yeah, that's a, there's another tip. Even though my permits, international driving permits out of date, I'm still going to carry it. Because <clears throat> it looks like I'm uh, still trying. I've got the excuse that uh, Corona's kept me in the country and I've not been able to go back and renew it. They've let us off with a few things with uh, with the visa extensions. So they've made it cheaper for us So because we're stuck. So hopefully if I do get pulled over and I'm carrying this, then hopefully they just don't look at the date. There is a date on it somewhere. On the front. On the front. Oh, damn it. <laughs> That's really obvious. There's a date there, 26th of October. One year. Valid from one year. The good thing is, a lot of Lao police officers don't, don't read English and don't speak it, so hopefully they can't, they can't read that bit. <laughs> so I could just maybe say it's valid from the 26th of October, 2019. All right, let's go. arrived at the Blue Lagoon. What what one's this? What? Uh, Blue Lagoon number two in Bang Bien, or just outside Bang Bien, 12 kilometers. It started off with a tarmac road, which was really nice, especially considering the suspension is really bad with three people on the bike. <laughs> yeah, the road was really bad for about half of it, so I had to go at 20 kilometers. Nearly slipped a couple of times, but we're here now. For the record, Here's the key. It's going in the top pocket of the bag. Wow. These are cool. These are like, they've got like flowers in flowers. Wow, this place is so cool. Oh, that's nice yeah, there's a nice pool over there. Look at this tree eating another tree. <laughs> it's massive just wrapping all the way around and it'll just it will just consume the tree that it wraps around crazy a cool tree house that you can go up and chill out look at the view wow it's such a good view up here there's no way i'm jumping off of that no way The water here is uh, filtered through, filtered through the limestone. You see all this jagged, interesting shaped limestone here. You see, you'll see loads of cracks going through it, and it's really porous. And the water goes through, and it gets filtered. So the, the sun shining off of it at the moment, you can't really see it, but it's super, super clear. I thought the Blue Lagoon would be a bit bluer to be honest with you. It'll be disappointed with this one. Rare in Southeast Asia that that happens. The sun's not out at the minute, but maybe if it comes out, I'll, I'll jump in, but it's a bit too cold for me. It's more like a turquoise green. Actually, it looks a lot bluer in the, in the sun. When the sun comes out, it's a lot bluer. I think I found like a little uh, jungle track or something, so I'm gonna go have a look. Whoa! Holy crap, you can literally see. You can see like 30 foot down through the water. No way. That cave that you can see there, that's at least 20 foot underwater. There's a cave down there. That is so cool. Oh, I don't know if, if you guys can see this. Oh, I don't think you can, but there's fish in there. What do you think? Scary. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Super cool though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, let's try and throw some food in. That looks like it's floating and it's sunk about six foot. What, are you actually going in? No, me and Dan have completely sissied out. You kind of need to jump in now. You need to take one for the team. You got more balls than me and Dan. <laughs> you ready? Do you want me to count you in? Are you going to dive in? I'm going to try. Go on, give it a good dive. Right. Th tell me when you're ready. Ready? One. Two. Three. <laughs> How's it feel? It's oh, for God's <laughs> sake. Every British person says that. It's actually not that cold. And that's the second line that every British person says as soon as they get in the water. So Molly's, uh, Molly's swimming in the pool. It's too cold for me and Dan. <laughs> You're not going in, Dan? No. Me neither. Yeah. I'm going to go get a beer, I think. <laughs> and Molly can't tell me that I can't. Well, she can, but she can't stop me now. What are you doing? I'm going to go get a beer. Sabadi. Tao dai noi. Sip pan. Tao dai. Sip pan. Okay. Uh, our song. So yeah, that is the tourist price, but there's no way you're going to ever haggle anyone down at a tourist destination like this. Cop chai I don't know, I feel like I've been catfished a little bit, to be honest with you, with this place. You, I, I've seen loads of videos, you know, of other vloggers coming here, YouTubers, they're all coming here and making, you know, these beautiful, really natural videos, you know, with loads of nature, you know, no buildings or anything like that. No bins, no metal and plastic buildings. But they just, they must just come here and just cut everything out. So they only tell you like half the truth. But really, instead of this place being like a secluded, natural limestone lagoon, it's more of a walk park, to be honest with you. It's just, yeah, it, that. It's just for like Lao families to just, and tourists to just come and have a barbecue and spend the day here just swimming in these like concrete concrete pools it doesn't look nice i don't know i i expected something a lot different but yeah vloggers don't show the truth just heading home now on the motorbike gonna go have some lunch maybe go to the market and buy some stuff to make a tom yum at the kitchen in the in the hostel save some money but I haven't really got any other plans other than that today. Probably just chill out. <coughs> We're back at the hostel now. Um, I'm quite tired after watching Molly do all that swimming. So we're just gonna we're just gonna eat and then chill out for the rest of the day. Me and Dan are just gonna pop to the, the local market, uh, fresh food market, and uh, buy some ingredients to make a Tom Yum soup, which is one of my favorites. Right, should we go? Sabadi. Sabadi. Uh, Tao dai. Kilono sip pan. Sip pan. Uh, Tao dai. Uh, ani. Sip pan. Sip pan. Um, kung kilo. Huh? Kung kilo. Kung kilo. Kung kilo. Dang la kung. Tao dai noi. Noi. Sip ha. Uh, yak, yak noi. Okay, noi nung. Song pan. Ah, uh, song pan. Kop chai. Yeah, so this is song pan. This is 20 cents. And the tomatoes are $1 per kilo. The onions are $1 per kilo. But we're only getting half a kilo each of them. Do we want some coriander? Uh, Tao dai? Noi? 
Songpan. Songpan. Yes, this whole bunch of coriander here. Oh, it's actually a it's a, it's a mix. You've got coriander here, and then you've got dill, and that's also 20, 20 cents. Yeah, we can add that. Uh, Tao Dai. Ha Oh, you have. Have one, I think. Mi Liao. How you have one? Uh, Bo. Bo Mi. Noi. Oh, doi. Oh. Bầu dạy, bầu dạy lại. เออคุกคุกคุกคัมโบคือการเชมพายห้าพันคือการห้าพันเอ่อโดยเอ่ออ้าวอ้าวอันนี้ Anyway, that's uh, yeah, that's about it for me today. To be honest with you, I'm kind of bored of uh, hearing my own voice. So uh, yeah, we didn't do too much today, but quite often when you're traveling, you're not doing loads of extreme stuff all the time. You want to chill out a bit. Sometimes you want to do nothing all day. You just want to sit by a pool or sit in a hammock or even just stay in bed and just sleep all day. But yeah, anyway, Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next video, I guess. Done, say bye. <laughs> Very enthusiastic.